Hello and welcome to The Talk. On this program, we'll talk about issues and bring to you the people who know all about the issues so that they can talk to us. Now, even though we say the only thing constant in life is change, I can tell you that change is never easy to accomplish. When people are set in their ways and you want to move them in another direction, you often meet with resistance, especially when people have been doing the wrong thing and you want to move them in a positive direction. My guest today heads the agency in Nigeria that is charged with the responsibility of reorientating Nigerians, and that is the National Orientation Agency. So, how has the agency been working to achieve its mandate? What tools are available for the agency to do its work? How easy or challenging is it for the agency to do all that it needs to do? And what is it that Nigerians are doing that the agency is trying to change? All of these and lots more we'll be talking about with my guest today. Welcome to the program. I am Bola Oyeyemi. And when we come back, you'll meet my guest, the Director General of the National Orientation Agency, Mr. Mike Omeri Agbo Omeri. <laughs> Okay, it's the talk. Welcome back. I said you're going to meet my guest. And now I introduce the Director General of the National Orientation Agency, Mr. Mike Omeri Agbo. You're welcome to the program. Thank you, Bola. Good to now, be on the talk. That's good. Now, sometimes before we go into the talk yes. about how you are reorientating Nigerians, what it is that Nigerians have been doing and all of that, well, it's good to know who Mr. O'Mary is. I know you've not always been the Director General of no, NOAA. Of yes. Not. <laughs> so before now, just tell us a bit about. You. Well, um, I have a, a short story to tell about myself. Okay. And I will try I to love make stories. it even shorter. <laughs> I was born in 1964 in movie of Adamawa State. Okay. And I went to school in Maiduguri. And uh, graduated in 1988 and worked with the steel rolling company. Thereafter, I moved to Planned Parenthood Federation of okay. Nigeria. Oh. One year, mostly with a short shot. But before then, I had been a teacher after okay. I left uh, my uh, old levels okay. in Kiana, present okay. day at Nasra State. Now, from there, as a program officer, I worked briefly with the Adawa Secretariat to the National Constitutional Conference in 1994. Um, then the then military administrator of Plateau State, Colonel Mana, appointed me director of press affairs. Okay. The position I held until National State was created, and I moved in same capacity, uh, uh, you know, to the new state in 1996. Yeah. Uh, while there, the late wing commander Ablahi Ibrahim of blessed memory, who became the administrator of Nasrallah State, appointed me the commissioner for social development, youth, and sports. Okay. And thereafter, I was moved to the Ministry of Information, uh, Youth, Sports, and Culture. Yeah. And then shortly afterwards, I was moved again to the Ministry of Works, Housing, wow. and Transport as the commissioner there. <laughs> you moved around now, a lot. Yeah. After all that service to to the state. Yeah. I, at the dissolution of the ESCO, yeah. I moved to Abuja and um, worked with the Federal Mortgage Bank as the manager uh, public uh, affairs, from okay. where I also was posted back to life here as the state manager of the yeah. bank. Oh, okay. Now, uh, it didn't last long before I was pushed back to <laughs> Abuja again okay. to head the, to be the manager secretariat yeah. of the bank. And, uh, Shortly afterwards, I, I left to start my own private business with some okay. friends. We established the Gulf of Guinea Consulting. Okay. And uh, from there, the present Senate president, president okay. of the Senate, I mean, David Mark, yeah. uh, GCON, appointed me a special advisor on politics and government. Oh, okay. 
okay. the position I held until uh, throughout the last, uh, you know, Senate. Okay. Until uh, uh, my appointment as the Director General of the National Orientation Agency. Okay, and your appointment was when? How long ago? Well, uh, last year. Last year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm about one year old now. Okay. Yes. okay. I became one year old in January. I was That's appointed January uh, 16th. Okay. Uh, 2012. That's good. You've moved around a lot, yeah. and yeah. That, that's good. Yeah. Now, I was waiting for a story that I didn't hear. Yeah. There's something I've heard about that I didn't hear. I yeah. thought you would share with us yeah. because it's of great interest to me. Yeah, I you don't know, know what that is? No, what, which one? <laughs> which one? There's so many of them. <laughs> okay. I, heard, I was watching a program, mm. you know, a personality program, mm. and I had a story of... Um, how you resigned from work somewhere yes. and you went to open the Suya <laughs> business. Yes, yes, uh, it happened. It Tell happened in JOS because uh, while working with the Planned Parenthood Federation, yes. we had some misunderstanding. And I thought, uh, I, I didn't commit any offense. I just met people who didn't understand what I was doing, who had their own interest to procreate and so forth and so on. And the last person I expected would pass judgment in my favor because yeah. I didn't commit the offense, sided with those 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 no other guys. Oh God, I felt really, really sad that look this is this is I, I excused him because he was not there. He lived in Lagos. He works in Lagos. Yeah. He was at the national headquarters of the fund. And I wonder what influence you know, his decision to side with those guys. Is those it people. that he didn't know you well he, enough? Or he what? did, but uh, the kind of complaints uh, were just not, um, uh, you know, that he received. And maybe because they were elderly, you know, I was just, then I was just about two, three years from the university. They had been in the public service. They were directors in the uh, state civil service. Yeah. So it was the mine against theirs or theirs against mine and so and he decided forth. to go you know, with them so he went with them they couldn't be liars lying against me would you know yeah. make the kind of allocations they did mm -hmm. so uh i said well why do i have to go through all this if as a nigerian as a man i see people i see people do all manner of things to survive not negative things positive things to survive at the lowest of society I have my education. Then I had two degrees. What is it that I can do to survive? I said, well, OK, let me prove these people wrong. And I, one day, I just asked the driver, park your car. I'm not saying this, that people should do it. It's, yeah. it's a bit not too OK for me. But I just parked the car and gave the driver my resignation letter and said, go to the office. I have nothing to hide. Take my files home and then leave the other. I told him I had a couple of files. Yeah. These ones are mine. Take home. The rest, leave it for them and I have resigned. From there, the driver was surprised, but I walked away, and there I decided I was going to sell suya. And so I opened a suya spot. Okay, I said, I can survive, and this is my country. There are possibilities for everybody. It's just accepting my situation and doing what is right to change that Making situation the best out that of matters the to me. And, doing and so positive. I went to sell suya in Jaws. I established what is called uh, Gashi. It's still there. Some young people, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> the premises inherited yeah. the, the place and it's still on. And so we just introduced a new dimension to it. Fortunately, I had gone to school, so I will improve, yeah. add value to what I was selling, yeah. the normal yeah. suya that people were yeah. selling. And so everybody wanted to come and have a test of this new suya in town. Mm -hmm. Nothing new about it, just yeah. the packaging and the way we sold it on with my friends on the, um, the radio and the newspapers and so forth at that time. And I remember and you did that for how long? Uh, for about for about six months okay. or thereabout, and I was earning good money. Believe me, more than what these were, people who were went earning. and compl yeah, yeah who complained against me. I was earning money. I was earning five thousand naira, and they, their complaint was, why should I earn one thousand naira <laughs> when they, as civil servants directors, were earning about three hundred or three hundred and fifty naira? Then. And you know, I was working in an international organization. They were volunteers who had to superintend the organization, and yeah. they thought it was too much for me. You know, so these were okay. the issues. And when I was appointed, when I was eventually appointed uh, press secretary, if I remember, the, the newspapers went to town. You know, they said, um, military administrator appoints Ms. Yeah. press secretary. <laughs> then I had two degrees. They didn't know. They Many didn't of them know. didn't understand. 
that uh, I'll be doing what I was doing, but I was very proud doing it, and I'm still very proud that I did that. Now, why I wanted you to tell that story mm. is, you know, for young people mm. to hear and learn from it. Mm. Because there you were with your two degrees, mm. and you were faced with this situation, mm. and you looked at how best you could move on. Now, and that's why I said you've not always been the DG no, of NOAA. No. But you know, a lot of young people see people today. They see where they are mm. and believe, you know, they've always been that way. They mm. don't know what people have gone through, no. you know, the struggles and all of that. Yes. And you didn't derail mm -hmm. that. So that's why I wanted you to tell that story for a lot of young people to learn from mm. that. You know, you can be whatever you want to be. Yeah. As long as you're focused. Oh yes, in Nigeria, unless if you don't want to. And believe me, it is not that I didn't have, I had siblings, same parents who had made it, who were okay. Good health but I didn't want to go and to become anybody, a, burden a, a, to anybody. a burden to anybody. I want, you know, to, to chart my own course. And I know that unless I do the right things, I can't get there. Yeah. It's not by being wayward, it's not by adopting other people's lifestyle. It's yeah. mine and what I want to be. Being yourself, mm -hmm. okay. That's good. Thank you very much for sharing that story <laughs> with us. And I hope people will, you know, learn from that. <laughs> now, so let's come back to orientation. Yes. Now, in my intro, I said, while the only constant thing in life is change, mm. at the same time, change is difficult to accomplish. Yeah. And when you want to move people from maybe a negative path to a positive path, it's more difficult that direction. Do you agree with that? Well, change is only difficult for people who are determined not to change. Okay? For people in a country like, yeah. like ours, if Nigerians are determined to change, it's the easiest thing to do. Because it simply means we wake up in the morning, we just do what is right. All of us will just begin to do what is right, and we will change our situation. Nobody changed, no angel came from anywhere to change the situations of those countries that we make reference to every day. And besides, with all the changes they have had, with all the uh, progresses they have, progress they have made, they still have challenges, difficulties. Yeah. But it takes the determination of the people, the will of the people, to make it work for themselves. So for us, yes, it may be, it may sound difficult for the unwilling, yeah. but for the willing, it's easy. And how easy can that be? Only if, for us, like talking about the country situation now, what we, what we, 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 we ought to do, okay, to make, to achieve the change that we need is to uphold the country. That is the dividing, that is the, uh, the baseline, is the country first. So once we say, Nigeria matters, our fatherland matters, it means whatever we do, whatever our aspiration, whatever our goals will be targeted towards upholding and uplifting our country. Okay, so change is possible. Yes. So much as we are determined, we are willing yes. to change. Yes. Now, let me take you back a little then. Yes. National Orientation Agency mm -hmm. used to be known as MAMSA. Yes. Now we talk uh, social and economic recovery, and, yes. then, and then a metamorphosis to no. Is it just a matter of semantics, the change, or is it really in the core mandate of yeah. the agency? Yeah. Uh, what started as MAMSA, uh, you know, was to attack or address, a, uh, you know, the political situation then. We needed to create awareness about the politics, you know, mobilize people to participate in politics. Essentially, that was it. And then you can achieve economic recovery and so forth if you participate in the in politics of the time. Now, what we have is an expanded um, agency uh, that incorporated MAMSA itself. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. MAMSA itself. Then the Department for Public Education of the then Federal Ministry of Information came on board. Okay. The Department for the Movement for Mass Mobilization of the then Ministry of Information yeah. also 
was brought on board. So you had these three uh, uh, institutions or departments coming together to form the agency. Okay, as we have it now. As we have it today. So the agency, uh, as a result of that, uh, that merger of yeah. units and, and sections and departments, uh, became known as a, as, a, as a national orientation agency with expanded uh, scope of of of, of, um, of service, yeah. okay. To to uh, now, if you look at the objectives of the agency, it is one that cuts across all sectors of our national life, especially public service. Because in addition to the um, the the mandate yeah. to publicize government policies, programs, and activities, yeah. you mobilize understanding of those policies, programs, and activities, Which and therefore, very, okay. so that you can galvanize people, people to support, to support it and, uh, and drive it. But that is just an aspect. The, the one other key aspect is yeah. the ability or the, the, the mandate, the portion of the mandate that says you take from the people to government, the feedback role. Okay. So it is the only agency of government that has that capacity, that mandate, to speak for the people and then speak for government. And that is why sometimes when we speak, we sound like activists, but we are not activists. It's a true reflection of the feelings of the, of people, the people at that, that you level. Carry over and to we cannot afford to change it. We bring it as it is to government. Yeah. And I, am, I bet you the president of Nigeria, Goodluck Jonathan, is happy with the things that we bring because we don't change it. As okay. they say it, we give it to him. So he has the alternative platform of hearing what is happening in society or what, we, what people feel about government policies, programs, and activities, the direction of government, direction of government and governance, the direction of um, the provision of services and uh, infra, uh, improvement of infrastructure and so forth and so on. Okay. So now, talking about reorientation. Yes. What is it that we are doing? that the agency is working to change. <laughs> Fantastic. When I came in, yeah. I said, in fact, when I first got to the agency, I said, why are they bringing me here? I didn't quite understand. The place was not motivating itself. <laughs> and I didn't think that there was, Nigerians are just too strong-headed. There is nothing to, to do here. Then I went home and slept, and I was to resume the next day. I said, look, you are not a failure. You, have, you just must make something. Yeah. I said, how do we start? I thought about it, and we said, OK, what is the issue? Just the same question. What is the issue? What are the issues? Why orientation? Bola, we discovered that in every facet of our lives, Nigerians are failing to do what is right. So the things that orientation is attacking are all those issues that you know that people are doing wrong. Impunity, corruption, don't, uh, abuse of environment. They give you health tips. You don't respect it. You know, you drive against traffic. You constitute yourself into a toxic material on the road. You, you, are, uh, you are more hazardous than the pedestrians. You know, you, we do all manner of things that are just not right. In the public service, in our respective offices, we hide the files. Somebody sends a mail you do for, because, uh, you know, it's uh, attention to someone and you think he's got some benefit, you keep it, you don't want to, uh, to push it. It all justifies the process of change and growth. And it is not just in public service. This is, these are the ones I mentioned. Yeah. What about the trader in the market that you are fighting for? If you say you want to buy 10 measures of rice, you pay him, you turn your back, he measures now and say it's 10. Even the bull has been beating has, up under. Will hit so the that. under. <laughs> I stopped somewhere on the way the other day to buy oranges. I saw a basket full of oranges. I said, wow, this, this thing is good. I will buy. How much is it we negotiated? Because I like this, this negotiation and haggling yeah. of prices. We did. And they said, okay, 500 naira. I'm going to pack four of them. I will give my friends one, this one, one. Mm -hmm. okay. As they picked one, two to put in the bag, it collapsed in the, in the, in the, in the basket, which meant what they did was yeah. to arrange it in a manner that it looked Yeah, it looks so like it was a fool. From bottom to the top, but then... So everybody is guilty. All of us are not doing the right thing. 
And so anybody who sits to accuse his leader or leaders who accuse followers, we are guilty of the same thing. Now, it's a Herculean task. Yes. With these are, since it covers all facets of our life. Yeah. And then one wonders, how do you begin to address this? Where do you even start from? But we'll talk about that when we come back. We'll take a break now. When we come back, he'll talk to us about how he's been tackling this. It's a Herculean task, all that he has said, but somehow he has that responsibility to lead the team that will change our attitude. So when we return, he'll tell us what they have been doing in the National Orientation Agency. This is the talk. This time's on NTAE. Welcome back. The program is still the talk and our guest is the Director General of the National Orientation Agency. Well, he has talked to us about some of the problems, the attitude, things that we are doing, the behaviors that we need to change. So now let's find out from him what the agency is doing to change Nigerians. So. Well, Bola, thank you. Thank you very much. And um, you see, let me start this way. Yes. Um, having identified what the issues really are. Yeah. So we built the philosophy of our value orientation campaign around the, the charge, do the right thing, transform okay. Nigeria. Okay. And it is a charge, not a slogan, that is directed at each and every Nigerian. And do the right thing. Do the right thing. Transform, transform Nigeria. Nigeria. You have a responsibility. Yeah, everybody does. To transform this country. And you don't have to wait until NTA transforms. You don't have to wait until uh, Radio Nigeria transforms, or Dark Communications transforms, or any other sector. It has to start with the yeah. individual. It starts with each and every one of us. It is not by dehumanizing leadership, but we should humanize leadership. They are humans. Yeah. Everybody in authority is a human being. But I am not saying that we should, in doing that, you know, uh, uphold uh, 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 the vices, tolerate, uh, uh, you know, uh, corruption, do, and, uh, yeah. you know, people must have integrity. Yeah. And that was why we even, and because it affects everybody, recently we were we, together with um, Omar Omar, we had the program, Talkers. Uh, Conference. Okay, Association of uh, Nigerian Talkers. The Talkers France. Conference, yeah. which is what you and I are doing. In fact, I think they should call you Talker Bola <laughs> <laughs> and Talker Mike, because that's what we do every yeah. day anyway. Yeah, that's so good. if you are talking about what is right, you yeah. must come clean. All of us talk about what is right. All of us talk about what should be done, but we don't do it. Like I always say, we, we, we wish for a good country, we don't work for it. So if we talk for a good country, let us also work for a good country. So the thrust is every morning that you leave your house, think, have you done the right thing yesterday? Am I going to do the right thing today? Do the right thing. 
And as you do the right thing, it changes the situation. And it comes with determination that, well, no matter what it is, so I'm going to change like the situation. So that is the message we first pushed out yeah. as soon as we came. But we have a number of platforms, a number of strategies, and a number of uh, implementation modules and plans. Uh, we've come with the Patriotism and Ethics First program, which we, because the agency now has realized that most of our roundtable, most of our conferences and gatherings yeah. discuss the same thing, uh, end up with almost the same resolution over and know, over and over, and nothing is happening. So we are shifting from conferences. Okay. Our platforms mostly do roundtables with assignments and monitoring. Because we monitor, I monitor myself, and I have people who monitor me in the agency. We okay. monitor right down the ladder. Okay. So we are establishing roundtables across the country. The idea is to establish as much as 20,000 roundtables by the end of this program. Is that um, what led to the performance um, bond that... Um well, the president has his own ideas yeah. of how to, to uh, assess, you know. Yeah. So what we are doing is to assist the process so that people can excel and score high marks by being productive. Okay. Okay. So the round tables, the, like the community dialogue we have, that the interfaith uh, uh, dialogue we have, and the, the campus focus programs that we have are not uh, conference-like. We discuss the issues. Everybody accepts because, like going to a clinic, you must accept your deficiency. You are yeah. you are sick before you can before you get go. Uh, then you the get right at, uh, so we discuss. We take our responsibility seriously and then begin to see how we can work at changing it. So that is what we do with the roundtables, and we monitor it right now. Okay. So, what tools does the agency have, you know, to carry out um, its mandate and? Um, we can also talk about some of your programs. I know you have um, what you call the Citizens Responsibility Volunteer Scheme. Yes. And what's that um, all about? And we have quite a number of platforms. Yeah. I met, I inherited quite a number, which I've strengthened, yeah. we've created some. There are many more in there that we have not even touched because we have, we have some constraints, which I'm sure we'll talk about later. But the Citizens Responsibility Volunteer Scheme is one of such platforms. And our idea, if people are listening to us, and those in even higher authorities are listening to us, is one that would provide a stopgap arrangement for all people who have talent, who have knowledge, interest, energy, and want to feel a sense of, achieve a sense of self-preservation. In their neighborhood, they don't have to leave to come to Abuja, to go to Lagos, but they can create wealth within their neighborhood. We want to create role models okay. out of people in the neighborhoods. So if you go to school, you finished, and you are yet to be engaged, either in government or any sector of the economy, yeah. you don't have to go and sit down and say, I'm unemployed, I'm waiting for government. You can work in the neighborhood as a volunteer in this scheme, transferring your knowledge, energy, and skill yeah. to your community. Because the community still needs your services. That's true. But because we always look outside at Abuja, we neglect our community needs. So we want to draw attention to community needs and we want to use community manpower to develop community in the neighborhoods. Yeah. So people who have read agriculture, to people who are doctors and, and or lawyers or um, uh, extension workers of any form, architects, uh, geologists and so forth, can be used to provide water in the community. But and so I believe um, to be able to do you know things like this, yes. I think we need to have like community centers, yes. right? So yes. that I mean, if there is a maybe a clinic, you mm -hmm. know, for instance, mm -hmm. and all, you know, if you're a doctor, you mm -hmm. can go there, you know, so that people can you know do different things in that center, and then if the you beauty go, of it, Bola, yes. is that the National Orientation Agency is in 774 local government areas. Okay. So they are automatically, yeah. maybe uh -huh. not substitutes because they may not have all the infrastructure, yes. but to start, you There's have a structure to start with. That's good. Okay. So what we are saying is, in the community, we register them, they stay there and begin. We, we talk to MTG, for instance. If you're building wells in the community yes. or um, boreholes or some school renovation or building, Use these architects with. who are still waiting to be employed. They have That's learned good. something in school. And there are other talents that may not have gone to school, but they have the, the, 
the, the talent yes. to be carpenters, to be masons, under That's the supervision good. of these who have schooled. That's good. And that way we empower society and we, we trap the resources. You may be surprised that at the end of the day, people will not even begin to look for government jobs. They will stick to what they are doing. They create gangs of positive. Is uh, that um, walking across the country? We've now just or? launched the pilot in Anambra a couple of months ago. Okay. I think late last year. Okay. We are planning to do a second in Kaduna when the late uh, governor. Uh, okay. The unfortunate incident happened in Kaduna, and yeah. so we are repackaging to come out, and we are looking for people to understand what we are saying so they can support it. We are also reaching out to the Shopee program. Okay. We can because ours has the capacity to be ev to be even more sustainable. So we want to marry what they are doing with the you win and the women win and whatever, all of those. If we put it there and domicile it, people don't have to come looking for who they know. You just go register and you continue in the scheme. You don't have to, you, it doesn't have to be that you know somebody before you yeah. get access. Once to they need um, your services, they'll call there. you to come. Yeah, there. That would be nice. And you are constantly undergoing training. So. For us, yeah. in orientation agency, whatever our programs are, we take it there to the local government, okay. That's it. to the community. Now. So you are constantly engaged and constantly busy doing something positive, and you become role model. Remember, yeah. sorry, remember those days we look out for people who are either in school mm -hmm. or who are workers somewhere who come home. Now, many of us have become abusers of values. So if we go home, we sell the wrong values to those young people. Yeah. So we want them to become. Um, promoters of values and role models unto themselves, and it is possible to achieve it. I have uh, yes. examples. I have some young man who went to school in, in, in Mina. Yeah. He's an Igbo boy, Wandu. What did he do? After graduation, he said, I want to do, I don't want to work in government, and I want to be a Mina, he write engineering. And he looked around Mina, what are they doing? Selling, uh, they are doing Kuli Kuli, everybody. He repackaged it and he has bagged it. Coolies, cookies. Mm -hmm. He's selling there. He cannot. Every of my occasion now, I buy it for him. Mm -hmm. And there are many like that. Yeah, that's good. Now you also have the uh, civic responsibility recognition award. Yes, yeah. we yeah. we introduced that to yeah. encourage Nigerians to build a culture of uh, honor. Yeah. We cannot we cannot give um, a reward that is commensurate to their action to yeah. their act. Yeah. But we do that to create platform to project them and project the Nigerian value, which we all know has always been the traditional, traditionally Nigerian way of doing things. Yeah. If you find something, you return it, if you, you know, until it became eroded. So if you have people who are doing these things, we project it that they still exist in our country. Yeah. And so our country is not as bad as they say we are, yeah. because there are still so many good people who can do these things. The few who do the wrong things become the Nigerian factor. But they are not the Nigerian factor. The traditionally Nigerian factor are people who do what is right, and there are many yeah. of us in this country. So how many such awards have you So given far, out? we've given about, um, I think we gave nine or so. And I can tell you some of the categories. Okay. One, we gave uh, Iswa who returned money. We got some dollars in the taxi forgotten by a foreigner. He only knew that he dropped him at Hilton, okay. nowhere else. He went back to Hilton and reported that should anybody make this inquiry. I came to this place at about so, 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 I will check your records. Okay. If there's someone who checked into your hotel about that, ask them. That was how he did, and he returned the money. Oh, that's 18 good. million. That's good. And it came in hard currency at that time. You know, then who do, who also got something by a student, left by, in his taxi by a student. Yes. Uh, <laughs> the good thing about it, or the coincidence about this, yes. is that the, she was the, or she is the daughter of one of the former staff of NTA, Engineer Amana. Okay. She left her things in the car and forgot. And the guy found it. He checked through and saw telephone number. He called. The father answered. He said, come. Don't worry. I will bring your whatever was left in my yeah. car, including money, her certificates, and so forth. Yeah. She was just coming from graduation. Yeah. He said, yeah. nine o'clock, I will bring it. Nine o'clock, he was he there. Was there. Oh, and there are many amazing. like that, so we cannot keep reporting everybody who did all this thing. But we need to build a culture yeah. of honor. Of honor. You're talking about um, 
some of the awards that you yes. have given. Yes, this guy in London, a young guy yes. who had no reason to compete for Nigeria, to even bear the name Nigeria, because his great-grandparents had migrated. They are even changing colors. They have changed colors. His name is Jonathan Akimbi. He had no reason. When Nigerians are running to go and compete for other countries, yeah. he decided to compete for Nigeria yeah. on his own. He paid, uh, he registered for the sport in the name of Nigeria. He wore Nigerian colors. How beautiful it was that day. I was proud. And many of those, yeah. many of those who came with me felt really proud. But the most important thing that yeah. turned us up, that stirred our patriotism even more, was when we gave him the award and the colors. He said, this is better than the Olympic medal for me. Yeah. Oh, the green, white, green medal from my yeah. country is better than the Olympic medal. Oh, that's and and so he up, he said now all the other competitions across the world, he will be competing for Nigeria oh. even on his own. And this is where there were some young Nigerians who left this country at old age to go and compete against Nigeria. They say Nigeria cannot do anything for them when all they need. Like mm -hmm. those who have left this country to go and be professional footballers, professional uh, athletes, and so forth and yeah. so on. Where did they start from? If it was bad, how did they get there? Yeah. Then there are people, some of them, who have gone there and are struggling to also come and compete yeah. for Nigeria, quite a few. Yeah, but that's... essentially, the lesson is that there is virtue in loving and okay. passionately, in passionately okay. loving your country. So the whole idea is to get people that when you do the right thing, yes. there is honor in that. There is honor You in can that. be, you know, rewarded for you. And yes. even if you're not rewarded, mm. by doing the right thing, you feel good yes. about your country yes. and all. Okay, so let's look at some of the tools you have. Um, oh, wait a minute. I had um, on radio, within <laughs> NOAA radio, Noah radio, right? Yes. Good afternoon, Nigeria. You are listening to 97.7 .7 National Orientation Agency FM station live in Abuja. Please do always do the right thing in order to transform Nigeria. My name is Ronke Egwalo. Please keep listening to 97.7 .7 National Orientation Agency FM and bye for now. Yeah, we we have been championing or crusading yeah. that we should have community radio stations. Noah by orientation yeah. and organization and structure yeah. speaks in 520 dialects because our staff must have that capacity. So we spread them to their respective communities. So uh, radio is uh, important yeah. as much as person-to-person uh, uh, -person communication is. So we felt that we should advocate for community radio ownership, you know, and to even make it... Uh, more comfortable for everybody. We mm. said, why don't we let communities can own it, then we jointly control content to avoid excesses of individuals and so forth and so mm -hmm. on. It is possible to do it. And we have experimented by asking, doing a small survey with some communities, they are happy. Okay. They are comfortable with the arrangement and it can be done properly. So what we are doing, NOAA Radio is just one other platform that we just created and experimenting. We so now has a license. We, are, we hope to get a license. Oh. We, are ju we just have it. We are testing and we hope we get a license. We are working at it. That's we have good. applied to the uh, relevant authorities. We have also spoken to the right offices. Okay. You know, That's uh, Mr. President is interested in, 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 in what we are doing about uh, uh, really? community yeah. radio and what we are doing. Okay. So it's just a, a test and we hope that it will uh, very soon catch up and every community will have a radio station. Well, that's that's very good, um, but now let's talk about whatever we do. The challenges and all. Now, at times, we start programs, but getting to sustain these programs is always, you know, the problem. Now I'll tell you, I had an incident the other day with um, road safety. Mm. You know, I just want to talk about this and see how you know you work with them if you do. I know there was a time where road safety will, you know, stop you and talk to you about your belts and even when you use your phones and all. But for too long now, it's, it's like the road safety does not care. You can go without your belt. You can even use two phones, you know, while you're <laughs> driving. It's true. That, so only last week they stopped me <laughs> and the man, Madam, you're not using your belt. I said, I thought you had stopped all about this belt. I said, because for too long, 
I even wonder, where is road safety? Are you not doing anything about you know this again? I said, so that's why I didn't bother. Mm. I'm just wondering. So you know when things like that you know come and then it fizzles out. I think National Orientation Agency, even you know for other agencies yes. who start programs, mm. I don't know how you work with them, how you even monitor them if you do that yes. to be able to ensure that these programs are continued yes. and they just don't do it for a few years and then that is just the end of it. Mm. Yeah, I think uh, perception at that time was that they had achieved, especially here and in most of the major cities. Uh, I have seen, I have those days, I drive, I park, make a call and move. And most, if they pass, they see you, they hail, they see you are doing the right thing and so forth. Now, um, yes, many agencies have also erroneously uh, or just choose to misunderstand or refuse to accept the role, the important role of the National Orientation Agency in the implementation of their own programs. Yeah. Look, the agency is not going to do public relations for any agency, but the agency will process information for attitudinal change and make sure that it permeates the corners of Nigeria. And we can stay on it because of our spread. Yes. And 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 so uh, uh, we keep telling most of the agencies: if you have programs like this, let's with us. We have the platform; we can stay on it. Keep yes. your budget for public relations. Support capacity for us. Yes. Support our platforms. That is all we need. Keep your money for your PR. Keep doing your PR. Keep doing your news and press releases. Yes, because where they cannot those. reach, we, you we, have, we can reach. You know, you uh -huh. have the so food all agencies all of government, and that's yeah. one of the things I'm pursuing now. Yes. All agencies of government should be compelled to set aside funding for their uh, processed information for or, or attitudinal change to be accessed by NOA. And not that you come and give NOA the money. No. If you have those things, NOA will write proposals to you, convince you of what it has, and then you, yeah. you know, fund it or you support it in kind or in just the way you want to do it. Let us have organization. Let us do what is right. Yes. So you keep your money. We will do the proposal. You fund what you have budgeted to, to you know, implement or, or your program for, for public awareness. We can not know everything. Yes. We, you are the professionals. We have the platform. Yes. It's like, and I keep saying, it's like going to N NTA or you're going to um, AIT and so forth and other stations. Yeah. When you come to NOAA, that is what you get, the effect you get. And that is the feeling you should get. Okay, yeah. so... Uh, but essentially, um, we are in the process, we are talking to them, we have reached uh, out to road safety, I've visited there, okay. and uh, Chidoka has also visited me once, and uh, we have agreed to synergize to do a few things. Even right now, uh, we have proposed to, to take the highway code and other road sign mm -hmm. uh, yeah. info materials to, to, to the people. And um, some of the other agencies, that is why I have been undertaking uh, advocacy visits to many of these agencies so they know okay. that we're so not in competition can, with their public yeah. relations department. We're just doing what we're established to do. Okay. You know. Now, are you maybe getting support or let me say partnership from any, with any foreign? Um, yes, uh, we just did the, the, the Freedom of Information uh, Act. We translated, we are training for capacity and uh, the uh, democratic governance uh, uh, project too, of, uh, with, the, with the UNDP and other supporters like the EU, the Canadian uh, Agency for International Development and uh, UK Aid have uh, supported us okay. to to translate a portion of it, just in seven states. And okay. so imagine, they gave us 70 million, and you know how their funding is tied to specific things yeah, and that we yeah. executed it we, we executed it clinically professionally and transparently we train people from seven states who also train we also trained um, another seven also okay. six that's okay. 13 we are training uh, about 150 local government officers we have translated the act into uh, local language, okay. three local languages, and we're mm -hmm. proposed to do more uh, okay. in other languages okay. and train as many uh, people across the land as possible. Okay. You need a cinema 
those days, it was one of the most effective yeah. uh, platforms of communication. Yeah. You just put them in the public square there in the front of chief's um, uh, house or yeah. public square and everybody comes, you give the message, you know. And then um, uh, the other thing is, uh, uh, you know, uh, getting other agencies or government to understand what we are doing so that they can take advantage of the agency and the 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 the, the what we have brought now is a yeah. business-like approach. You know, yeah. it's not the normal, you know, uh, arrangement where people have to be bureaucratic to an extent that you know it's a, it's a normal approach. I have, yeah. I have brought one or two consultants. I think one consultant to yeah. work with me because I don't want to tamper majorly with what I have found on the ground that people are used to doing. But I will tamper with it on. only to the point that it becomes more effective. Yeah. But the new ideas that we are bringing, we are working with people who understand the pace. That's good, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not often you hear that in Nigeria, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> that somebody says, okay, I don't want to tamper with what I made on ground, mm -hmm. I only want to build on it. Mm -hmm. Because one of the problems we've always had mm -hmm. is that, you know, a new person comes and is like, whatever you made on ground goes. <laughs> at this times on NTAE. What is happening in the country now? What wonders? What happened? What changed in Nigeria? Yes. Why is this, you know, happening? Where is the love for Nigeria and even for our fellow human beings? When I went to the University of Medipri, Certainly, we had a meeting of the alumni last, uh, last week yeah. because we thought that our voices as alumni of the university should be heard. Yeah. I find I was fortunate that I grew up most of my life around that area. And I went to primary school there and the university. So most of the friends I know are there. What is happening in Meduguri is actually unfortunate. Those who are Nigerians among them should really put those guns and bombs and down and talk to us and convince us to join them. We want the good things too. We want to enjoy life too. We want to service, we want to worship God too. But not in an atmosphere of fear, fraught with danger, destroying property. Is um, uh, Noah, you know, maybe trying to reach out to even find who are these people? Well, we started members. all of these, all the things that you see happening today, we started, we started okay. the uh, community dialogue thing. We had advocated for dialogue long before now. Yeah. We have uh, been, you know, implementing these peace uh, programs across the country. I was the first to visit the uh, JAWS, uh, okay. I mean, uh, the, the Sheikh, to cross the other side, to mm -hmm. go and meet the Sheikh. And before long, they have, you see the peace that is gradually coming out of JAWS uh, and so forth. We, we have been advocating for this. And so through our Community dialogue and interfaith platform, interfaith platforms. Yes. We have talked about peace. We have appealed for peace. We have urged people to reinforce peace in their respective uh, communities. Okay. So that we have been doing. That's good. And and we are happy that uh, at least there is a a glimmer of light somewhere that it could be better. So at this point, we only appeal to the others to listen to their brothers, the rest of us Nigerians. Yes. Okay, thank you very much for coming on the talk. But just a final word to Nigerians, just talk to them. 
Well, Nigerians, we have a country, a beautiful country, unique in all standards. Each of us in our diversity has a talent. Each one of us need to contribute that talent to building a society that is transformed, in which all possibilities are achievable and attainable by individuals. We need to once again respect each other. We need to once again stand by each other, speak positively for our country, humanize leadership, support followership, and build a strong united country. Nigeria is been too long. The rest of the world has waited for Nigeria to take leadership and transform it. Now it's the time to take that leadership and transform the world. Okay, it's on that note that I say Thank you very much for coming on the talk and really talking to us. And I hope that, you know, Nigerians will listen. And um, this is the only country we have. Yes. No matter where you go, home is home. Mm -hmm. You'll come back here. So yeah, let us yeah. together join hands and build, you know, a country of our own dream mm -hmm. that we will all be happy. There is enough space for everybody. Oh, yes. And, I mean, you, yeah. you don't always have to agree. No. But we can agree to disagree yes. and uh, dialogue. Mm -hmm. Thanks once again for coming. On I hope you will call me again. You know, uh, as a talker, the <laughs> forum that is the talking talk. We'll definitely <laughs> do so. <laughs> So, thank you very much for joining us on the talk today. We'll thank see you. you again some other time. Bye for now. Thank you.